It's time to introduce another brilliant idea in our study of real analysis. We're going to introduce what's called the Cauchy Criterion, and we'll see why it's so important. We'll also go over a simple example of proving that a sequence is Cauchy. First, let's give a little bit of motivation. Consider this question. How can we show that a sequence converges without knowing its limit? Thus far, in order to prove that a sequence converges, we almost always have to use the definition of convergence. That definition, of course, characterizes what it means for a sequence to converge to a particular limit, which means it's useless if we don't already have an idea of what the limit might be. So when we don't have an idea what the limit of a sequence might be, our options to show that it converges are pretty limited. One thing that we proved is the monotone convergence theorem, and that can help us out in this sort of situation. Using that theorem, we know that if a sequence is monotone and bounded, then it converges. We don't have to identify what the limit is to use the monotone convergence theorem. And I'll leave links to my lessons on the monotone convergence theorem in the description. But of course, not every sequence is monotone, so the monotone convergence theorem isn't always going to be able to help us. So what we're really looking for is an equivalent way to characterize convergent sequences without involving the limit. In our pursuit of such a characterization, we may look at this graph of a simple sequence, a n equals 1 over n. We know that this sequence converges to zero, and on the graph, zero is of course this line here. Since the sequence converges to zero, the terms of the sequence are going to get closer and closer to the same number, that limit, zero. And it's that relationship between the terms of the sequence and the number that they're getting closer and closer to that define the sequence as converging to zero. Then we may wonder, is there some other relation that's a vital part of sequences converging, but that has nothing to do with the limit? Well, if it doesn't have anything to do with the relation between the terms of the sequence and the limit, it seems the only other possibility would be some sort of relation between the terms of the sequence and themselves. And so the big idea is this. In a convergent sequence, since terms are getting closer and closer to the same number, the limit of the sequence, it would seem reasonable that the terms of the sequence must also be getting closer and closer to each other. Just for example, consider the first three terms of this sequence. The maximum distance between two terms in this sequence in the first three terms is represented roughly by that green line. If we then, say, look at a4 through a6, so the fourth, fifth, and sixth terms of the sequence, the maximum distance between any two of these terms is represented roughly by that green line. Clearly, just in this little picture, we see that the terms of the sequence appear to be getting closer together. And the Cauchy criterion formalizes this idea. So here our definition is in all of its glory. A sequence a n is Cauchy if for every positive real number there exists a point in the sequence after which any two terms are within epsilon of each other. So once more, stated in simple language, a sequence is Cauchy if for every epsilon greater than zero, the terms of the sequence eventually are all within epsilon of each other. For example, you might let epsilon equal 1 over 100, and maybe after the 1,000th term of a particular sequence, any two terms after that point are within 1 100th of each other. So that's what a Cauchy sequence is. We'll see an example of one and we'll quickly prove that it is Cauchy. But remember, the idea behind this is that we're trying to characterize convergent sequences without involving their limits. And so the fact that makes this definition of Cauchy sequences so important is this. Indeed, a sequence converges if and only if it is Cauchy. So if a sequence converges, then it is Cauchy. 
If a sequence is Cauchy, then it converges. This is indeed an equivalent characterization of convergent sequences, and it doesn't use the limit. So that is really cool, and we're going to prove this fact that Cauchy sequences and convergent sequences are the same things in a future lesson. For the rest of this lesson, we just want to get a little bit more familiar and comfortable with what a Cauchy sequence is. Again, consider the sequence 1 over n, very simple sequence that we know converges to 0. This is, in fact, a Cauchy sequence. For any epsilon greater than 0, there exists some number, big N, so that any two terms of this sequence after the big nth term are within epsilon of each other. So let me just show you a concrete example of that. Maybe you set epsilon to be equal to 1 tenth. We'll see how I came up with this in just a minute, but I can assure you, as long as we take big N greater than 2 over epsilon, then we should be good as long as we consider terms of the sequence past the big nth term. So in this case, 2 over epsilon is 2 over 1 tenth, which is 20. So we want to take big N greater than 20. Then I'm telling you, we can take any two terms of the sequence after the 21st term, and the distance between them will be less than 1 tenth. And make sure you're seeing the connection between the definition and this example. We've just taken an example of a positive epsilon value, and I've told you there is this big N, N greater than 20, so that if we take any two terms of the sequence after that big Nth term, those terms of the sequence will be within one tenth of each other, within the given epsilon. And again, I'm not going to prove that this is true, because we're going to prove that this sequence is Cauchy in just a minute, but let me show you an example that should give you some confidence that this is true. I'm saying this inequality will hold for any two terms of the sequence after the 21st term. So to put it to the test, let's try two terms that are really far apart as far as their positions in the sequence go. How about the 22 millionth term, so 1 over 22 times 10 to the 6th, and the 22nd term. Certainly, these terms are very far apart in the sequence. One is the 22 millionth term, one is the 22nd term. Notice both of those numbers are greater than 21. 22 million and 22, they're both greater than 21. So this inequality should hold. If we take the absolute value of the difference of these two terms, it should be less than 1 tenth. The absolute value of the difference of two numbers is the same as not taking the absolute value, but subtracting them in the order of the greater number minus the smaller number. So let's rewrite it like that. Then bringing these two fractions together by giving this one the same denominator as this one, it would be equal to 10 to the power of 6 minus 1 over 22 million. And again, that's multiplying this fraction by a million over a million so that we've got the same denominators and then we can do this subtraction. Of course, 10 to the power of 6 minus 1 over 22 million must be just a little bit smaller than 10 to the power of 6 over 22 million without the minus 1 in the numerator. So if we don't subtract that 1, we get a number that's a little bit bigger. But then, of course, these 10 to the powers of 6s, they could cancel out, and this is actually equal to 1 over 22. So we see the distance between these two terms of the sequence, even though they're really far apart in the sequence, one is the 22 millionth term, one is only the 22nd term, the distance between them is less than 1 over 22, which is of course less than 1 tenth. So hopefully that gives you a feel for what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy, getting a little bit down and dirty with an example. If a sequence is Cauchy, then for any positive number epsilon, there exists some point in the sequence after which any two terms, any two terms after a certain point, are within epsilon of each other.
And again, the big idea here is that if a sequence converges, then the terms can only be so far apart after a certain point because they're all getting closer and closer to a common limit. Conversely, if a sequence is Cauchy and its terms are getting closer and closer to each other, it seems reasonable that they must be getting closer to a common limit. Again, we'll prove that Cauchy sequences and convergent sequences are actually the same in a future lesson, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Finally, let's go ahead and prove that the sequence 1 over n is in fact Cauchy. By definition, in order to do that, we need to find a big N so that any two terms of the sequence after the big nth term are within an arbitrary epsilon, a positive number epsilon, of each other. So what we're going to go through here is scratch work that we can then use to write the actual proof. Just like with a typical convergent sequence proof, near the beginning of a Cauchy sequence proof, we would identify a big N that will work. But here, before we write the proof, we actually have to figure out what that big N should be. So we want to take this expression that we're interested in, the expression representing the distance between two terms of the sequence, and we want to work with it until we've got something that we know we can make as small as we want, so that in total, we can show that this is less than epsilon. And you'll see what I mean as we go through this. For starters, the triangle inequality is often really useful, and we could apply that here if we rewrite what's inside the absolute value bars as addition. It's of course equal to the absolute value of one over m plus negative one over n. Then we can apply the triangle inequality across this addition. So by the triangle inequality theorem, this is less than or equal to this. Of course, m and n are both natural numbers, so these absolute value bars aren't going to change 1 over m, and all they're going to do to negative 1 over n is make the negative 1 positive. In other words, what we have here on the right is equal to 1 over m plus 1 over n. So right now, we have that this distance between two terms of the sequence is less than or equal to 1 over m plus 1 over n. So if we can make 1 over m plus 1 over n less than epsilon, we should be good to go. In order to make this inequality true, of course, we would want 1 over m and 1 over n to be less than half epsilon. Then of course, adding them together would be less than epsilon. So if we want one over n and one over m to be less than epsilon over two, solving this inequality for n tells us that we would want to take n and m to be greater than two over epsilon. And that tells us the big N value that we want. We want to take big N greater than two over epsilon. Then when we take M and N greater than big N, we should be able to reproduce this same string of inequalities in the proof. And how do we know that we'll always be able to find a positive integer big N greater than two over epsilon? Well, that's because epsilon is positive, so two over epsilon is positive, and then by the Archimedean property, we're guaranteed to be able to find a positive integer greater than two over epsilon. Finally, here is our proof that the sequence one over n is Cauchy. We take an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Then, by the Archimedean property, we know there exists a natural number big N greater than two over epsilon, and thus, importantly, one over big N is less than half epsilon. Then, we'll consider terms of our sequence, AM and AN, for M and N greater than big N. So the absolute value of AM minus AN, that's the distance between two terms of our sequence, is by definition of the sequence equal to the absolute value of one over M minus one over N. Then we rewrite that as addition, then apply the triangle inequality, then notice that this is equal to this, 
and this is equal to this, then since M and N are greater than big N, if we replace both M and N with that smaller number, big N, that will make the sum bigger. Again, that's because here we have one divided by M and one divided by N. Big N is smaller than M and N. So if we instead divide one by that smaller number, big N, this sum is bigger. Finally, we know that one over N is less than epsilon over two because we took big N to be greater than two over epsilon. Thus, this is less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, which equals epsilon. So the distance between any two terms of our sequence after the big nth term we've proven is less than epsilon. And so indeed, the terms of the sequence one over n are getting arbitrarily close together. Thus, it is a Cauchy sequence. And as we'll prove soon, this means that one over n is a convergent sequence. So in that way, we've proven that one over n converges without involving the limit. And that's what's so powerful about the Cauchy criterion for sequences.